could not have come up with a worse disaster movie than the one playing out right now in Japan, especially at the crippled Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. Despite many layers of safety features, the plant fell victim to a perfect storm of unfortunate circumstances. Yeah, and this drama will play out for many years, and it all began two weeks ago on an ordinary Friday, March 11th, and then the earth moved. 2.46 p.m. local time. A massive 9.0 earthquake rattles the core of daily life in Japan with a sustained shaking many people have never experienced. But the shaking underground was just the first sign of nature's fury. Within an hour, a 30-foot wall of displaced water smashes into Japan's northeastern coastline, obliterating everything in its path including emergency power generators at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant on the coast. Five hours after the quake, shortly after 8 p.m., while much of the country is still deep in shock over the sheer scale of the tsunami's destruction, the Japanese government declares an emergency at the nuclear plant. No one yet foresees how a bad situation is continuing to spiral down. The first hint comes less than three hours later. The plant's cooling systems, absolutely vital to keeping nuclear fuel containable, are not working. The Japanese people and the rest of the world are warned to brace for the worst. Just a few hours later, at 2 a.m. Saturday morning, radiation levels at reactor number one begin to climb. By dawn, radiation levels at the plant's main gate are eight times higher than normal, a very troubling sign. Twelve hours later, at 6.22 p.m., the first of three major explosions transformed three of the reactor buildings into charred hulks of concrete. Hydrogen, most likely generated from the melting fuel rods, has built up inside the buildings and then blown up. Officials say no harmful gases were released by the explosion. Nonetheless, two hours later, 200,000 people within 12 miles of the plant are asked to evacuate. Within days, officials warn that any or all of the reactor cores are at risk of melting into a puddle of super-hot, highly radioactive liquid metal. All but 50 of the plant's 800 workers are evacuated. Those who stay behind know they are risking their lives in order to try and save countless others. 8.54 a.m. On Tuesday morning, a fire breaks out in the cooling pond of reactor number four. It burns for two hours. A second fire follows the next day. Shortly before 10 a.m. on Thursday, helicopters dump seawater on reactors number three and four in an effort to keep the fuel rods from melting. But the effort is deemed ineffective. Trace amounts of radiation are found at nearby farms. Over the weekend, special trucks began dousing reactors three and four with tons more seawater. It seems to be keeping the situation from getting worse. Power is restored to reactors two, five, and six. Five days later, Friday, March 25th, Japanese officials make the announcement no one wants to hear. Reactor number three may be leaking highly radioactive water. And coming up, Americans are concerned about their 